I'm with women's handball player Daniel Daskalakis. How does it feel to be one of the top women in the sport? Uh, humbling, I guess. Um, still have a, there's always like ways to improve, so I don't feel like I'm at the top yet. So ways to go. At the big tournaments, I feel like there's a lot of the Americans and the Irish girls who come in. And how much do you guys feel that? Because I know you're all friends. Um, yeah, definitely feel that. Because like the two biggest groups, I think, where like the Irish pretty much like take over four wall, and then you have like the Americans or like more New Yorkers that it's more like one wall. So then, yeah, I feel like yeah, you definitely feel that going into it. Like you know, they're the top girls, and you have our top girls, and then it's just a mix. But I mean, overall, it's just top players. You don't really look at uh, nationality. In women's handball, how hard is it to find someone to practice against who is as good as you? I mean, I know New York has some great handball players, but are you playing against the guys a lot of times, or are you finding people to compete against? Um, yeah, for the most part, like, in New York, it's, it's really easy to get guy games, and then a lot of the guys have really big egos. So, like, for me and Sandy, we usually play together, but we don't really play singles against each other, because, I don't know, it's just a weird dynamic, not wanting to see each other's game. So what we do is we play a lot of two-on-ones against the guys, and they feel like they can beat us. So we can just keep playing that over and over and over, because they really think that they have a shot, but they just like die out so quickly. It's like a, uh, How often do you play? How much time do you have to commit to the sport? Um, I don't really play as much as I used to. When I first started it, and really like dedicated myself, because like it's in New York City, it's a varsity sport in the high schools. So I think then I was like in the morning, like eight in the morning to like eight at night. I was just at the park every single day. Now, I mean, ever since Worlds, when I came back, I maybe play like once a week, if that. Before that, like let's say I'm training for something, I would say like at least three times a week. What's the speaking of Worlds, what's that experience like? Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you get to see all your friends and all that, but it's like, you know, that's like our Olympics. That's our biggest thing, our World Cup. So it's like, it's a really prestigious award and it's a lot of pressure. And I don't know, I think it feels really good. Like you can be like, I won, I'm the world champion for the next three years, which is cool. Do you have an ultimate goal in handball? Something that you really um, want to achieve? Yeah, I think like, just overall like get like, be considered like the best. Like not just like the best one wall player, four wall player, like just the best overall handball player. And I want to be like somebody that's like, you know, emulated. That's that's what I want to do. I don't want to just be this. I want to like be ex expand. So, so far I'm like, I finally got my small ball national title. Got big ball. Got worlds. Now I slowly try to get more into four wall and practice a little more for that. Do you think Katrina Casey go and try to qualify and be in the men's side of things? Have you ever considered that? Because now that you're kind of taking them on in New Actually, York. Actually, um, well, I've done that since I was younger. We played in the men's tournaments if they allowed it. There were I played in the doubles. I've actually done well in men's tournaments. Um, it's actually funny because there's a competitor here, Na Lu, and we both entered this men B doubles oh, like a while back, and we ended up like playing each other in finals. And like we just took out all the men men teams, and like we had a male partner, but it was just funny because we we were the two teams that like only with only a girl. So I mean we've done it before. I think it's a great thing that she's doing it. It's it's more broadcasted. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's good if you can get in and you want to try to challenge yourself, why not? Talk a little bit about the handball family, because you guys all come and travel together, but then you have to get on the court and play each other, yeah. and there's such, there's such good friendships I can see going on, but then yeah. to get out there, you're all so competitive. Yeah, I mean, like in New York, it's just so close-knit, because like, there's just, every, like it's a small community, so like everybody knows each other. Um, they're specific, even though there's so many courts, there's specific courts that you go to because you know you're going to get good games so you play there so like for me when I first started um, Tracy was somebody that was like like she you know she was number one so when I saw her at the park I was like oh man like at first I didn't know how to approach it because I just started handball and I was like like can I talk to her like can I should I get her autograph I didn't know what to do but um, she actually like like me and Sandy and a couple of other girls she, her and Caesar Sala and uh, Paul Angel, they actually like took a group of us and trained us. So we would go to the park and we would actually do training sessions with them. And then from there, I think we just like grew from that our relationships. And then we like we filmed together, so like we know how to like deal with each other on and off the court. 
So you obviously love the sport back then. What's yeah. made you stick with it? What do you like about it now? Um, I think I've uh, traveling for one. I really like traveling like all over the opportunities that it like affords you. But I think just me being so competitive is the reason because there's always something you can do. Like you can always be better. You can always do more. And I feel like uh, like I'm trying to like finally uh, be happy with what I have achieved because now I'm like okay you have achieved so like you've achieved a lot so like be happy with that and continue but before that I was just, like I was so angry I was like oh I can't win everything but um, yeah I think it's my competitiveness just trying to like keep doing better what's changed that for you what gave you that kind of different peace of mind a little bit um, so I think for the our crossover tournament actually which was right after Floral Nationals in uh, Venice Beach I was like, was like getting really angry at myself, really frustrated with shots, and I'm like, well, I just gotta train or do better, I figure something out. So I actually took like a little bit of time off, and I went to actually coach Dow in Lake Forest, and just like basically became a beginner again, learned from him, and then from there, I was just kind of like more calm, I guess, because I wasn't playing and I wasn't like surrounded with like constant tournaments and things like that, and just being competitive all the time. So it just took away from the stress. And then like I did look back at like things that I have done. I'm like, okay, I've done well. Just continue to practice and not think about like so much uh, pressure on winning everything. And um, yeah, just take it like with a grain of sand, something like that, grain of salt, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> so you take the time off. What are you doing? What, what's kind of your other passions? Um, well, I work in a gym. Um, my basically like in a healthy lifestyle setting I'm trying to do um, work with kids I teach youth sports so working with kids is like really like it's fun it keeps my mind like preoccupied with that and like you know they're all goofy so I don't know what that's gonna come out of their mouth and um, we've been doing like different things like I play sports I like basketball anything that's like just away from handball just to keep my mind refreshed and then we actually recently joined me and Sandy uh, a mixed martial arts school so we've been doing like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and uh, Muay Thai and stuff. And I used to do that a lot when I was younger. And now bringing myself back to that, it's been really like, I don't know, it's been like nostalgic. At the same time, it's been really fun. So I might just throw myself more into that. So you're like wanting to put me in a headlock right now. <laughs> <laughs> not angry, not angry. <laughs> That's cool though, to kind of switch it up too. It probably makes you a better handball player and vice versa. Yeah, um, yeah, I think the just refreshing myself was uh, what I really needed and at the same time it's really good like cross training like with just different things and like trying to build myself up again. I think that helps. You're also a toy collector? Yeah. Um, Tell me about this hobby. I think it's really interesting. It's super <laughs> cool. Yeah, it started with like, I used to work at GameStop and we started getting these like little toys, these pop toys that are actually they're really popular now. And so I got them, and I'm like, oh wow, they're so cute. So then I started collecting, like, just I was like, all right, I get this series, I get this series. And then there's like specific toys where like, I'm like, oh wow, that's a really cool toy. So I would just start getting them. And then I realized like they sell for so much more. Like so, like certain people, like there's this one toy. It's like an exclusive Funko Pop toy. I bought it for 15 bucks. It's going for like 500 right now. So then I was like, I think that also, like the exclusive and knowing that, so then that got me into that, like just wanting to buy and sell those. But then there's like specific toys that are just like, I'm like, how do they do that? Like with the lights and everything. And then I just like collecting them. I don't know, it's passion. Is there one toy that you will never surrender no matter how much it goes for? Yeah, there's a couple of those actually. I have this, uh, this Iron Man toy and it's from Toy Tokyo and it's exclusive. Uh, basically there's a base and then there's the Iron Man and it levitates on the base but it's two magnets and they kind of like they oppose each other that makes the levitation and the spin but it's really hard to actually like keep it going I can't do it myself I need Sandy to do it for me um, and it like lights up and the light is like crazy and the way it has like throughout the toy and everything it's so cool I would not give it up always be yours so thank yeah, you so much great talking to you good luck thank out there you. yeah thanks